Assalamu alaikum everyone. In this video lecture, we will be discussing paper 1 that is multiple choice question paper of O level biology 5090. As you all know that syllabus has been changed and in June 23, you will be tested according to the new syllabus. So what I have done for you is that I have created several sample papers which are the paper ones that include the questions from the new syllabus. This will be very useful for you because you will just be solving questions which are now in the syllabus and not those which are out of syllabus. Let's start. Question number one. The diagram shows a plant which characteristic of living organisms is shown by the plant in the diagram. So guys, we can see that the shoot of the plant is growing towards the light. And this is called positive phototropism. So what is phototropism? It is basically positive phototropism is basically a growth mechanism, right? by which the shoot grows towards the light. And this is an example of sensitivity. So the answer is D. This is not respiration because respiration involves the breakdown of glucose using oxygen to obtain energy that is aerobic respiration or use of glucose or breakdown of glucose without oxygen to obtain energy that is anaerobic respiration. This is not an example of reproduction because reproduction could be sexual or asexual. Sexual reproduction involves the fusion of gametes and in case of the plants it involves pollination and requires flowers. It's not asexual reproduction because asexual reproduction involves formation of a daughter plant and it involves budding and light has no role to play in that. It's not excretion because in plants, excretion involves the removal of gases. For example, during the day, oxygen is excreted and uh, during the night, carbon dioxide is excreted. All right, let's move on to MCQ number two. Humans have the scientific name Homo sapiens. What do the two parts of this name refer to? So guys, you should know that this is how we scientifically name species. So Homo sapiens is basically a scientific name for humans. And you, you should know that the first word in the name of the species is the genus, right? And second word involves the name of the species. So the answer is A. Homo is the genus and sapiens is the species. For example, if we uh, talk about another name that is Panthera tigris, this is the scientific name of tiger, right? So Panthera is the genus of the tiger and tigris is the species name. Let's move on to MCQ number 3. The diagram shows a stonefly larva. Use the key to identify the stonefly larva. So guys, this is the MCQ um, testing the concept of dichotomous key. So simply we have to follow the instructions and answer accordingly. So has two sulci at the end of the abdomen. Yes, guys, we can see that there are two sulci at the end of the abdomen because there are two sulci and not three sulci. So we will go to two and not three. You won't go to three. So abdomen is longer than the thorax. Yes, we can see that abdomen. This is the abdomen and it's longer than the thorax right so the answer is a thorax is longer than the abdomen no b is not the answer let's move on to mcq number four which part of plant cell controls the movement of substances into and out of the cell so guys as you all know that cell membrane is the structure in a cell which is partially permeable and it allows only certain substances to pass through Basically, uh, the cell membrane controls the entry and exit of substances. Cell membrane determines that which substance will enter the cell and which substance will leave the cell. So the answer is A. Let's move on to MCQ number 5. The diagram shows the structure of a plant cell. So guys, this is a root hair cell.
what is a function of this specialized plant cell so guys we all know that the function of the root hair cell is the absorption of water and mineral ions so it absorbs ions from the soil right root hair cell absorbs water and mineral ions from the soil it absorbs carbon dioxide from the air no that is not the function of root hair cell it transports across uh, from the leaves no this is the function of phloem tissue it transports water in stems guys it absorbs water from the soil it does not transport water the function of water transportation belongs to the xylem vessels so guys please be careful what students do they mark d in this case because they see water but read it carefully that it says transports water root hair cell absorbs water from the soil it does not transport water in stems so the answer is b let's move on to mcq number six the photograph shows a chloroplast magnified 7000 times what is the actual size of the chloroplast so guys over here uh, we are given with the measurement of the image so guys this is the image in front of us and 70 millimeter over here is the image length that is denoted as i and over here into 7000 is magnification which is denoted as m you all know that the formula of magnification is equals to image length divided by actual length what do we have to find we have to find the actual size of the chloroplast and for that what we will do we will simply rearrange the formula actual length is equals to image length divided by magnification image length is 70 millimeters and magnification is 7000 times so if we find out the answer the answer is 0 0.01 millimeters the answer is c right let's move on to mcq number seven how do carbon dioxide and oxygen move into and out of the mesophyll cell so guys you should know that carbon dioxide and oxygen gases simply diffuse into and out of the mesophyll cells so the answer is b carbon dioxide and oxygen are the gases which, which move into and out of the mesophyll cell by diffusion mcq number eight what are the features of active transport so guys you should know that active transport requires a partially permeable membrane or a cell membrane it cannot occur without a cell membrane or partially permeable membrane so it occurs through a cell membrane particles move from a higher concentration to a lower concentration no they don't particles move from a lower concentration to higher concentration because this is active transport right particles are moving against the concentration gradient that is from a lower concentration to higher concentration and active transport is an active process it uses energy from respiration so the answer is c mcq number nine the data shows the concentrations of sugar and starch in an onion so guys we can see that the onion contains 3.7 grams per 100 grams of reducing sugar right and onion does not contain starch so the onion is tested with benedict solution and iodine solution which set of results is correct as we saw in the table that onion contains reducing sugar so benedict's test will be positive and you will get a brick red color because the onion does not contain starch so the starch test or iodine test will be negative and the color will be yellow brown the answer is d let's move on to mcq number 10 the diagrams show a protease enzyme catalyzing the breakdown of part of the protein molecule into smaller pieces which diagram has three correct labels okay guys so if you look at this diagram simply this uh, structure which i'm highlighting with green is the enzyme and the bump or depression on the enzyme is the active site so this is true this is the enzyme however uh, over here this is not the product it's labeled wrongly and the substrate is labeled rightly that's because this substance is the substrate because it is fitting into the active site right so is the wrong option because uh, the product is labeled wrongly we have to select an option with a diagram that has three correct labels so guys this is not the product this is the enzyme this is the active site 
so B is not the answer. This is correct substrate. Enzyme is correctly labeled. Active site is correctly labeled. So C is the answer. Over here we can see substrate is uh, wrongly labeled because this is the enzyme, not the substrate. Product products are correctly labeled, and active site is correctly labeled. So D is not the answer. The answer is C. Let's move on to MCQ number eleven. The apparatus shown was used in an experiment. The carbon dioxide content of the water in each test tube was measured at the start of the experiment and again three hours later. In which test tube will carbon dioxide concentration decrease? So guys, uh, we can see four test tubes and these different test tubes contain different organisms. The first two test tubes are covered by black polythene bag to keep out light and each test tube contains water and water contains carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide concentration is measured so it was measured at the start of the experiment and it's measured three hours later so we have to select a test tube in which the carbon dioxide concentration decreases so guys if we look at test tube a this black polythene bag so the light does not enter the test tube right or we can say light is absorbed right so what will happen because of this the aquatic plant will not photosynthesize it will only respire an aquatic animal will also respire so they will release carbon dioxide into the water and carbon dioxide concentration will increase and not decrease so option a is wrong if we talk about option b so there's plant only and plant will respire only releasing carbon dioxide because there is black polythene bag which absorbs light so again carbon dioxide concentration is increasing and not decreasing so b is not the answer if you talk about c the test tube c is getting the light there is no uh, black polythene bag and there's only a plant over here so this plant will photosynthesize absorbing carbon dioxide it will it will also respire but obviously rate of photosynthesis will be greater than the rate of respiration so less carbon dioxide will be released and more carbon dioxide will be taken up right so what will happen that the carbon dioxide concentration will decrease in test tube c if we talk about d there is an aquatic animal and this will only respire releasing carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide concentration will increase in d and not decrease so in a b and d carbon dioxide concentration is increasing whereas in c carbon dioxide concentration is decreasing and c is the answer let's move on to mcq number 12 the diagram shows a cross section of part of a leaf what is the name of the cell labeled x so guys if you recall the cell x is the palisade mesophyll cell this is the epidermal cell the cell of the upper epidermis this is the palisade mesophyll cell this is the spongy mesophyll cell this is the guard cell and this is the lower epidermal cell so x is the palisade mesophyll cell mcq number 13 why do plants need nitrate ions guys you need to know that nitrate ions are required for growth and why are they required for growth because nitrate ions provide nitrogen for the synthesis of amino acids so as you all know that by the process of photosynthesis the plants make glucose and glucose when reacts with nitrate forms amino acids and amino acids are required to make proteins and proteins are required for growth right so nitrate ions are required for growth and over here what will be the answer why do plants need nitrate ions because nitrogen is a component of amino acids and to make amino acids nitrates are required because if we talk about glucose, glucose contains only carbon, hydrogen and oxygen whereas amino acids contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen and the source of nitrogen will be nitrates. Let's move on to MCQ number 14. In which part of the body of a mammal does physical digestion occur? So guys, physical digestion is when the large food pieces are broken down into smaller food pieces. So you need to know that there is no physical or chemical digestion going on in the gallbladder. There is no physical or chemical digestion going on in the liver. There is no physical or chemical digestion going on in pancreas. However, in mouth, there is physical digestion uh, that is uh, with the help of the teeth. 
So chewing is an example of physical digestion, which occurs in mouth. Answer is C. Let's move on to MCQ number 15. The diagram shows part of the human digestive system, which structure produces lipase. So guys, you need to know that lipase is produced by pancreas because lipase is found in pancreatic juice, which flows into the duodenum. Let's move on to MCQ number 16. The photomicrograph shows a cross section through the root of a buttercup plant. So guys, this is the section taken from the root. And how can we uh, recognize that this is a section taken from the root? Because if you see, this is the xylem tissue in the center, right? Which somewhat makes um, X almost and uh, surrounding the xylem, we have the phloem, right? This is the characteristic feature of the root. What is the main function of the tissue labeled Z? So guys, Z in this case is the xylem vessel and or, the, or we can say uh, xylem tissue. And the function of the xylem tissue is the transport of water in mineral ions. The answer is D. Let's move on to MCQ number 17. The diagram shows two shoots at the start of an experiment on transpiration. What are the likely readings on the spring balances after three days? So guys, if we see shoot X contains leaves, whereas shoot Y does not contain any leaves, right? So obviously, uh, in shoot X, transpiration will occur and in shoot Y, transpiration will not occur because transpiration occurs via the leaves. So what will happen is that over here, we can see that there is an oil placed uh, over the water. So water cannot evaporate. Water can only enter the shoot and be released from the leaves as water vapor and this process is known as transpiration so guys what will happen is that the shoot will absorb the shoot x will absorb water and the water will be lost as water vapor from the leaves by transpiration so over here the weight or the mass will decrease right if we look at the shoot y there is no transpiration so there will be no change in mass so shoot, the mass of the shoot y will remain 25 grams whereas the mass of shoot x will decrease to 25 grams the answer is b initially the shoot x had a mass of 30 grams but now the mass will decrease to 25 grams basically the mass i'm talking about is not just the mass of the shoot it's the to get the mass altogether of the test tube and the oil and everything right Let's move on to MCQ number 18. The diagram shows a section through the human heart. Which blood vessel is the pulmonary vein? So guys, you should know that this is the heart in front of you. Uh, this is the heart in front of you. This is right atrium. This is right ventricle. This is left atrium and this is left ventricle. So guys, pulmonary vein is a blood vessel which carries blood from the lungs to the left atrium of the heart. So the blood comes to the left atrium of the heart via the pulmonary vein. So pulmonary vein is D. Right. If we talk about C, what is C? Blood is pumped from the left ventricle into this vessel. So the vessel C is aorta. Right. And what is vessel B? The blood from the right ventricle is pumped into vessel B. So vessel B is basically pulmonary trunk, which divides into two pulmonary arteries. Right. So it's pulmonary trunk or pulmonary arch, which divides into two pulmonary arteries. And if we talk about a. So A is basically uh, vena cava. Why? Because it brings blood to the right atrium. Let's move on to MCQ number 19. Which part of the blood contains hemoglobin? So guys, you should know that hemoglobin is present only inside the red blood cells because red blood cells have a function of transportation of oxygen and hemoglobin binds oxygen. MCQ number 20. What are the approximate percentages? of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the inspired air so guys inspired air the air inspired air is the air that we breathe in and you should know that the air that we breathe in contains 21 percent or 20 percent of oxygen and 0.04 percent of carbon dioxide 